Hello my soccer universe and before anything else since it's the first video I'm making in 2021 Happy New Year uh, I will do a more dedicated New Year's video but I have to see how the schedule allows it you know it's New Year's uh, pretty much a family time and uh, the scheduling at the moment for Vividis is rather tight so I have to see when it will get it will come in the first week uh, more dedicated looking forward to 2021 okay uh the first video of the new year uh, is still of the old year because la liga decided to pull in around from the 29th of december to the 31st of december so yeah see it as a transition video i decided to wear sevilla because sevilla got a win we have um the headlines of course and it's not only that Sevilla final, uh, beats Villarreal in the top duel in La Liga we also have that the two giants are dropping points Atletico increasing their lead and Real Sociedad winning the derby and in Portugal we have that the uh, big three get big wins uh, get wins not big wins and in France there's a new coach at a big team so that's what we'll be talking about in this video um, let's start in La Liga, because uh, that's the most recent one, the one where I saw definitely the most. Um, I made an effort to watch Sevilla via Real, at least while doing some uh, stuff for um, on the computer. I have to say, this was a typical Sevilla win, you know, not very exciting, but also kind of um, convincing. Uh, it was not that they uh, had a lot of trouble, Sevilla. Uh, got very early on a penalty in the eighth minute and Villarreal had a really trouble coming back. The penalty though, uh, was, uh, yes, the hand was out and the ball touches the fingertips and yeah, by the rules, I don't like uh, this type of penalty given. But yeah, if he gives a corner, corner king the war says, then yeah, it's a penalty. Ocampos converts it. Uh, and I have to say, it was then mostly severe. I mean, there was not much coming from Villarreal. And Ocampos then plays a, also a really nice pass in the second half into Ndiziri, who makes it 2-0. Uh, and that was the game. Villarreal had some tentative chances, but that was that. A uh, little bit more action, however, not a good performance. And I remember uh, Christmas Eve, uh, I was, uh, we were talking with my father and he said, it's really not worth watching Barcelona at the moment. I said, no, it's absolutely not worth watching Barcelona. And I was really conflicted. Shall I watch Barcelona or shall I watch some Premier League? But then the Premier League was also not that great. So Barcelona went, there's at least more uh, storylines there. No Messi. Uh, he was sitting on the bench with all masks, so you barely could recognize him. But the most important thing is there was actually quite some action, but it never went Barcelona's way. I mean, there was in the eighth minute, uh, Braithwaite uh, put a penalty uh, kick wide. Then Braithwaite scores a goal. Everyone thinks, yeah, that's the goal. It's called off for offside. And I have to say, I mean, the first half, uh, Abar definitely tried to be more uh, the, on, on, on defensive. But the second half, uh, although Dembele comes on, it, uh, Eber seemed to be threatening and actually get the goal through Kike, which to me seemed like so perfect uh, to embody the performance of Barcelona. I mean, uh, yes, everything there, but it, just, it feels so disjointed and not with a lot of um, energy. However, that goal actually spurred them on and Coutinho came on and Trincao came on and Dembele go after all this. After Firpo assist gets the equalizer, Barcelona then pushing for for for, for the win. But to, to be honest, he, I think the point was deserved by a bar, and Barcelona cannot find the win. And whistle blew, Messi off. Uh, then on Tuesday, I actually didn't see much, although I see there was a 4-3 between Levante and Real Betis, but Levante had a 4-1 lead, so uh, yes, probably late, it, it was e e exciting, and a 4-3 should be exciting, but it's always more exciting if there's at least, uh, you know, there's an equalizer in there or something like that. Uh, Granada beating Valencia should be a big uh, surprise, but as of the moment, I have to say Valencia is not that great of a team anymore, so it is not as surprising. Atletico Madrid, yeah, they got the goal. Uh, was a free kick, uh, kind of uh, towards the midway line. Uh, goes to Carrasco, puts it in uh, to Suarez, who can net it. And Atletico actually fully in control of the, of the game. Were never really in danger of losing that match, which was I think a 500th one of 
Simeone in charge, something like that. So yeah, quite kind of uh, impressive. Now, no, 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 impressive, but it keeps on going uh, with Atletico Atlet Atlet Madrid, how they grind out the result. That is the impressive part. Um, I actually decided to watch Celta against Uesca and also I was rewarded for that because that was an up and down game and uh, Celta really playing well, uh, having a few chances and then when Aspas assists Nolito for one, one it was well well deserved and then in the day uh, Nolito plays a pass to Aspas, returns the favor, in the 61st Aspas runs the keeper, puts in the net 2-0, you think it's done and dusted. However, uh, uh, Siwane comes on and suddenly uh, Celta does not look that safe anymore and um, uh, he pulls from back in the 84th and then they were, were, were pushing for the equalizer. But over the entirety of the game, I think Vigo deserved the win. However, when I look, um, just you could have argued ar 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 that Wesker should have probably gotten a point out of there too. But I think overall the win for Vigo was fine. Elche Real Madrid, that was a weird game because um, I think Real Madrid really controlled the first half and then they did what the lamp is doing here to me. I cannot control this lamp anymore. I have to find a replacement, to be honest. Um, they had chance. I think they had, I think Casemiro hit once the bar, then a shot from Asensio hit the bar, but Modric um, gets uh, the header in the 20th and it's 1-0 Real Madrid and fully, fully deserved in on all accounts. Um, however, early on they gave up a penalty and then kind of all the control that Real Madrid had subsides and it is Elche who gets a deserved draw and it was a great result for Real Madrid. Uh, the Basque derby I did not see, I saw a highlight. I mean, uh, Oya Sabal back for Real Sociedad, which is a huge boost for them. Um, Porto, after Oyar Sabal assist, gets in the fifth minute the goal. There should have been more for Real Sociedad. Athletic Bilbao having a really, really, really bad showing. And Osasuna, uh, Alaves 1-1, uh, round out the round. That was a weird sentence. Um, so yeah, we have now in the table Atletico Madrid two points clear with two games in hand. Huge chance of winning a championship, but uh, we also have Sevilla uh, moving mo mo up into fourth at the moment. But it is all a little bit uneven, as you see. You see, they have some have 16, some have 17 games, even so on. So let's adjust to get a little bit of better feeling. And yet, it is Atletico Real Sevilla and uh, Real Sociedad with Atletico having a sizable lead at the moment. Barcelona only in fifth, and um, I think. The goal for Barcelona should be top four, to, to be honest, which is not a good thing to say. Uh, let's see if Real Sociedad Sevilla and Villarreal uh, can really challenge them. But I think championship, that's not in there anymore for them. Um, to the bottom, despite Elche and Rome, my model still does not like them. Uh, based on, on the ring, so even though their midfield is 65%, but now Uesca is odds on to get re relegated. Um, as are Real Valladolid and Osasuna don't look all that great. I also want to again point out Celta de Vigo rising up and looking good. The next round, which is already played, uh, starting tomorrow, um, I think Real Madrid Celta de Vigo is a really, really inter interesting game. Of course, the big name matchup here is the Seville derby between Betis and Sevilla. Uh, we also have kind of um, Valencian Comunidad derby with Villarreal and Levante. Barcelona playing at Huesca. Hmm, we have to see uh, Sora derby, also Sociedad and Osasuna. Yeah, and Atleto plays at Alaves. I think the two that I said first are probably the most interesting ones of that bunch. Let's move further into France where you see the standings here. The big news here is that on Christmas Eve Thomas Tuchel uh, more or less received the sack. They are um, negotiating a severance package and it's, um, Maurizio Pochettino comes in. Many people are happy because he's a former player. Uh, I have to see. I mean, it might have been the best point in the season to change a coach as you know I'm never in favor of changing a coach during the season because the new coach it's not fair to him um, although in Celta Vigo's case it actually worked but most of the all of the time it only gives a temporary boost and that the problems can come up, come up again um, I actually think if a coach is working um, you know the, uh, still has kind of control over the dressing room um, then you should see out the season with the coach but yeah Let's see. Uh, 
And what will Pochettino face first? He will face Saint Etienne. We have the also on the 6th of January they are playing, and uh, not everything is there. We have two slots. Um, Except for Saint Etienne against PSG, I think Marseille, Montpellier, Southern Duel is the other one that's interesting. And then we have a Breton Tarbe between Nantes and Stade Rennes. Um, with Nantes also have, have a new in the country, Raymond Dominic. And I'm really wondering what are they thinking? Raymond Dominic shouldn't be allowed near a football field anymore. To finish it out, uh, let's go to Portugal where we had uh, actually uh, almost proper round. It was from the 27th to the 29th. Um, Sporting beating Belenenses 2-1 Braga, Boa Vista 4-1 Braga uh, getting back into form. Benfica, that's actually rather uh, disappointing, 2-1 over Portimonense and Vitoria Guimarães, Porto 2-3. So uh, it's also kind of a lo uh, local derby, which means not much has changed there. Um, we have the top uh, six are unchanged and I think the top five will probably end out the season exactly like that. Uh, but it is still, you see Porto are favorites ahead of, ahead of Benfica, although Sporting is currently a little bit in the lead, but the two have just uh, considered to be stronger teams at the moment. Sporting still have not lost. Uh, the next round, see Sporting face Braga. I think that's a big game there. Uh, we have Santa Clara, Benfica, the two very similar, similar curves in Porto, more range. So uh, Sporting, that will be a real test whether they can hang on. So yeah, that was it to close out the one year and start a new one. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, fill me in if you want to say anything more to the games that I've been talking about and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.